Just recently, I've had a couple of messages from people asking for some general tips on self-teaching piano, okay? Now, I want to talk about some tips that apply to all of you, whether you're going through um, quite a formal route and learning principally from written music, or whether you can already read written music and you're learning about chords and improvisation and that kind of thing. So what I've done is kind of distilled a list of eight tips. Most of them I've, I've talked about before, but they're the eight key tips that I think you need if you're teaching yourself how to play the piano in whatever style. Okay, let's go. Tip number one is about practice. Get your practice right. That's not the same as saying practice really hard, because in actual fact you can practice really hard, you know, you could spend hours and hours playing your scales and working on your pieces, but it might not be very good practice, yeah? It might make you feel good about yourself, you might think, yeah, I've done three hours practice today, but if it's bad practice, it's not giving you uh, any benefit uh, at all. Rather than three hours of just mindlessly blasting through things, it's better to have just 20 minutes or half an hour of practicing well. So practice smart and not hard. How do you do that? You focus in on the stuff that is causing you difficulty. Yeah, I always say attack the problem. If you've got a 64 bar piece of music and 62 bars of it you can play absolutely fine and you know two bars are giving you a problem, don't just play the whole thing over and over and over again. Focus in on those two bars and devote your practice time to those. Yeah, so then you can drop them back in and you'll have a whole piece that works well. Okay, so don't practice just hard, practice smart. Tip number two is to listen to yourself. I go on and on about this in uh, different tutorials, but it's really, really important. The key thing about the piano is that it makes the sound for us. Instruments like the, uh, the violin and the trombone, you're making the sound yourself. So you have to focus on the quality of sound that you're making. But with the piano, it kind of looks after that for us. So because of that, it's really easy for us to get kind of very obsessed with just pressing the right notes, okay? And kind of completely lose focus on the, of the, um, the kind of musicality of it, which is the whole point, yeah? So don't get blindly focused on pressing the right notes at the right time. Listen to yourself and make a habit of listening to yourself. Tip number three is to go outside the stuff that you're learning as part of your piano lessons or your teach yourself course or whatever, okay? It's really easy, especially if you're having formal piano lessons, to just work really, really hard on the stuff that your teacher is teaching you. You know, so you get really good at... Mozart's Piano Sonata in C or whatever, but you don't practice anything else, yeah? So, you know, you do sometimes meet people who have... Uh, you know, got grade eight piano, but all they can play are their exam pieces up, up from, you know, starting from grade one, okay? Go beyond and go outside. And not only will it be more fun, you know, um, you know, uh, picking up songbooks and having a go at different things, but it will improve you as a pianist and as a general musician, okay? Um, if you can read a little bit of music, just go to a music store, pick up a, a fake book, as we call them, a book of, um, you know, a songbook with melody and chords or some books of popular songs and just pick your way through them, look at the music. If you can read music, look at the chords, look at how the progressions are put together, look at how the music works, and it will vastly improve. Um, your piano playing compared to the situation if you just play the stuff that you're kind of told to play. Tip number four, watch. Watch other people playing the piano. Now listening is cool and I would recommend that you listen to a very wide variety of music, nothing should be off limits, but when it comes to learning the instrument, watching is Better. That's because you can associate the, you know, um, a particular sound with a particular action on the keyboard. This is how I learned all about improvisation. When I was a kid um, in my uh, jazz band at school, I was having to play the xylophone because there was already a piano player. But when I could, I stood behind that piano player, Mr. Rick Seymour, great pianist to this day, and watched what he did. And that's how I learned to do stuff like that, not just by listening, because it would be kind of hard to figure that out purely by ear, but by watching the kind of, the riffs and licks that he used. And then I went home, obviously, and I tried to um, do them for myself. These days, you know, compared to 1988 or whatever that was, you have 
huge, huge advantages over 12-year-old Bill Hilton because you can go and look at YouTube and there are, you know, there are loads of piano videos on YouTube. Watch some of those. Um, you know, you can video other people playing the piano. So if you're in a band and you want to, you know, you want to copy what the keyboard player is doing and stuff, just, you know, get there with your phone. But do watch rather than simply listening because especially if you are uh, interested in improvisational styles, that is the way to develop your skills. Tip number five is to improve your ear. Now that doesn't mean that you have to get to a point where you have perfect pitch, which is where you know someone can come to the piano and, and press that note and you can say, yes, that's an E without even seeing it. Perfect pitch is, is kind of um, not necessary, yeah? Much more important is relative pitch, where you can, for example, hear that interval and know that it's a major third, or that interval and know that it's a perfect fifth. Okay, also, um, so you can get to the point where you know how particular chords are likely to sound. Okay, so getting an instinctive feeling for the sounds of different chords, even if they're getting to be quite complex ones. Now, your ear will develop naturally to a certain extent as you get better at playing the piano, yeah? But there are things you can do to speed up your learning and to give yourself a really good ear. There are quite a few ear exercises, ear training exercises, aural exercises we sometimes call them. Um, I've made a couple of tutorials about that kind of thing. I'll post links to those. Um, there are ear training apps, quite a few kind of iPhone and Android apps for ear training. Um, Aurelia is a really good one. Um, the, the single best thing I've ever done for my ear, and in fact for my musicianship skills in general, is singing a choir. I first joined a choir when I was uh, 15, and I've been in them uh, ever since. I'm, I'm still in a choir to this day, so that's kind of 27 years later. And choral singing if it is proper choral singing, S-A-T-B, four parts, you're singing from written scores, will improve your ear and improve your musicianship skills and improve your music reading like nothing else, okay? If you can join a choir, you know, proper choir singing from proper music, it will massively, massively in increase your uh, abilities as a musician, okay? So various things you can do there, but do be conscious of the need to improve your ear because it kind of feeds back into your playing. Um, it's kind of hard and difficult to describe, but once, once you have a better ear, then it, you improvise more smoothly. It even becomes easier to read sheet music because you look at a piece of sheet music and you can kind of hear it in your head and that translates much better then onto the keyboard. Okay, it's a much more smooth connection between the written music or the musical ideas if you're improvising and what happens on the keyboard. So work on your ear. Tip number six, work stuff out for yourself. Okay, it can be anything. It can be, you know, something you've heard on TV. It can be a favorite song, but working things out on the piano keyboard will help your ear, yeah? But it will also help your understanding of how melody and harmony work. Okay, um, let me give you an example. So like my little two year old is obsessed with the kids TV show, Paw Patrol. Okay, so I sat down at the piano and worked out how to play the theme song from Paw Patrol, which is really catchy. Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, be there at the double. Yeah, and now constantly every sort of waking hour of the day, it's play Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol, Paw Patrol. And I have to, you know, I play it over and over again. But enough of my, <laughs> enough of my child minding woes. Um, Sitting down and learning how to play stuff, as I say, will just really develop your knowledge. Um, that isn't to say that that's the only way you should play the piano, this kind of playing by ear, as people call it. Very, very, very few people can competently play the piano purely by ear. Sometimes people will say they can, but usually they have a, a very clear sense of the theoretical underpinnings of what's going on, okay? However, working stuff out by ear and by using what you've learned from my tutorials and elsewhere about harmony and melody is incredibly good for you. So next time you hear a really catchy tune on the TV, go to the piano and work it out. Tip number seven is kind of development of tip number six, and it's to write your own music, become a composer. You don't have to be massively capable. In fact, even if you just know a couple of chords, Can begin to improvise and play around on the piano and create your own compositions even if they're really simple just using the two chords so I was using F and B flat there okay and 
Spend a long time doing that because it's kind of fun, it's kind of satisfying, but it will give you an instinctive feel again for the way chords and harmony and maybe melody work and push your boundaries. Um, you know, think of a good melody in the shower and uh, go to the piano, get dressed first, go to the piano and, well, you know, assuming you have other people in the house, and <laughs> go to the piano and work out how it, um, how it goes, yeah? Be creative. Music is all about creativity. So why do people treat it as if it's kind of you know, um, you know, like a spelling test or something? It's not. Yeah. Be creative. Compose your own stuff, even if it's only really basic. You don't have to play it to anybody. It's just for you. Finally, tip number eight. This won't apply to all of you, but for those of you to whom it does apply, it's vital. Learn to read written music. Okay, so many people are like, yeah, I don't want to, you know, this, this learning music stuff, that's not cool. I, I want to play the piano and, you know, I just want to learn chords and things like that. That's silly, okay? Um, learning to play from written music or learning to decode written music, learning to write piano score is one of the biggest favours you can do yourself. First of all, it's super efficient. It's the most efficient way that's evolved over centuries of writing music in a way that humans can understand it. Okay, yeah, we have MIDI data. Um, you, you know, you can write MIDI data into your um, digital audio workstation really easily, but don't tell me that you can read MIDI data with your eyes because you, well, you might be able to pick it out, but it's really difficult. So learn some written music. Also, again, if you're learning to improvise, it will feed into that as well because you'll be able to play other written music which will develop your overall piano skills and yada, yada, yada. Take it from me, it's really worth doing, okay? So get a course book, check out my ongoing tutorial series on uh, Piano for Absolute Beginners because that covers everything you need to know about reading uh, piano music or will cover it when it's finished and learn to read music it is not uncool it is incredibly useful it's not even that difficult okay just you need to put a little bit of effort in but it is not that hard so tip number eight if you can't read written music jolly well learn how to do it Okay, so that's it. Hopefully those eight tips were really useful to you and hopefully you'll be able to take those and improve your um, your methodology for learning the piano because so many people now are teaching themselves how to play the piano. When I first started the YouTube channel back in 2009, I thought I would mostly be teaching things like improvisation to people who had already had piano lessons and just wanted to branch out. But actually most of you were teaching yourself, which is cool, that's great, okay? Um, just before I go, remember to subscribe to my channel, okay? If you haven't already, like the video if you thought it was kind of cool. And uh, please do check out my books. How to Really Play the Piano, the Stuff Your Teacher Never saw, Taught You is pretty cool, pretty handy. If you are teaching yourselves about chords and improvisation and stuff, you need to know how to read basic sheet music, um, but not loads, and it'll teach you everything you need to know, all the basics of everything you need to know about chords and harmony and getting started with improv and pop piano and, and that kind of stuff. Um, if you need to learn written sheet music, then check out my current tutorial series that I was just talking about in tip eight on um, Piano for Absolute Beginners, because that will teach you all that. If you're a little bit more advanced, not necessarily loads advanced, then, then, then you know, do check out Seven Studies in Pop Piano, my recent book of studies of um, kind of popular music styles, kind of, you know, your Ben Fold, your Elton John kind of stuff seven pieces of piano music with notes and full explanation of how they work, how the harmony works and all that sort of stuff. Oh, so there we go. That was kind of intense, wasn't it? Yeah, cool. Anyway, hope it was useful. Um, another video coming later this week for the end of March on, um, it's going to be the next one in the uh, Piano for Absolute Beginners series, which is going to then carry on into April and May, and we've got loads of other cool stuff planned. So there we go. Subscribe if you haven't already, and I will see you again very soon. Take care.